years ago, after finally coming to grips with a gender incongruity that I'd felt for almost all of my life, I transitioned to live my life as a woman. Here I am in 2003 with my first wife, Barbara, who I married in 1975 when my name was Jeff, who stayed with me when I transitioned to, woman, to live as a woman in 2002, and who'd probably still be with me today if I hadn't lost her to carcinoid cancer in 2006 after 30 years of marriage. Her death was a wake-up call. Life is short. If I was going to do something to help those coming behind me, I needed to, to get going on it. And so I got involved in LGBT philanthropy. And one of my proudest examples is this one. It's the waiting area of the women's health floor of Fenway Health, probably the largest LGBT-focused health center in the country. I'm very proud of this naming gift. So my involvement in LGBT philanthropy brought me to Outgiving in 2007, and I knew right away that I was in a unique position because there was only one other transgender person here. At Outgiving in uh, 2009, there were three of us there, um, I uh, teamed up with fellow Outgiver Marianne Simpson to create the Transgender uh, Giving Circle. What we wanted to do was to create an outgiving-like safe zone for transgender philanthropists to give to transgender causes. And the Gill Foundation was with us from the start, combing its networks actively for prospects. We were featured in the annual report. This is me with my second wife, Terry, who I married in Boston in September this past year, and who maybe some of you saw last night at dinner. We knew the need was great. According to a recent study, there's no single gift that's known that was larger than $15,000 to a, a transgender-only organization. And the three largest trans organizations in the country have a combined budget of $1.4 million. So we started the Giving Circle, but unfortunately, after uh, just a few months ago, we had to disband it. And, and why was that? Well, the, even with the Gill Foundation helping us, we weren't able to come up with enough members. And the people who were willing to be involved were generally allies. And so our first conclusion from that was that trans people with resources are even more closeted than we first thought. The second thing was that the idea just didn't seem to resonate with the people that we talked to. And some were even suspicious of what we were trying to sell them. So what we concluded from that was that trans people who are candidates for this circle are really not very involved in their philanthropy. And the final thing, which was really a surprise for me personally, the organizations that I was in, the LGBT organizations that I'm uh, involved with, declined to help us with this. And in fact, some of them even viewed it as a threat to their fundraising. And so what we concluded from that was that LGBT organizations just don't realize how little of their base, their donor base is trans and how few trans people there are in this country with resources to be able to give. So the Giving Circle was an idea ahead of its time. And what we need to do first is to develop transgender philanthropists. And the best people to do that are you. But why would you want to? Well, because it actually solves another problem that we have in the LGBT movement, and that is lack of transgender people on LGBT boards. The 2010 version of this study that just came out, the number's up to 6%. I'm told that if you exclude the trans-only organizations that are part of this uh, calculation, that it actually drops from 6% to 4.1%. That is up a little bit from when they first started doing the numbers a few years ago, when it was 3%. What should the number be? Well, let's see. The National Center for Transgender Equality says that the uh, prevalence of transgender people is about 1% of the population. And the Williams Institute says that the prevalence of gay and lesbian people is about 4% of the population. One to four. That means 20%. So how do we do this? Well, does it involve uh, mentoring, uh, creating trans-focused cultivation events? Um, reducing the give-get requirement for your LGBT board. Regardless, it's a good thing to do. Developing LGBT board members also develops LGBT philanthropists. It's a twofer, and I hope you'll help me with it.